In the previous video, we used this Southwest Technical Products 6800 computer, along with a teletype, to enter and run a simple machine language program. We then saved that program from memory out to paper tape, and finally loaded it back in from paper tape to prove that we could save a program and run it anytime we wanted. Today we're going to do something very similar, but with the next incremental step in technology. We're going to use a cassette interface instead of paper tape. The first cassette interfaces ran at 300 baud, so about three times the speed of the teletype, and it was a lot quieter, so that was a nice improvement. Most of the cassette interfaces were a board that would plug into the bus of the computer. However, Southwest Technical Products, with this AC30 that you see here, took a different approach. This is an external device that connects between the computer and the terminal on the RS-232 line. This allows the device to make the cassette and the uh, terminal appear to the computer to be a teletype. And in the teletype, you've got your console I.O. device and the punch and the reader all on the same serial port. And that's how this device works. The main reason for this was backward compatibility with existing programs. Up to this point, if you had a program that needed to load or save data, you could pretty much guarantee that it expected a teletype to be on the console serial port. And so by doing this, they had instant compatibility with existing software. That includes their own MicBug prom that assumed you would load and save through the console. Likewise, if you had an Altair or an MSI, basics on those computers assumed, uh, the early basics assumed that you would load and save programs through the console port to a teletype as well. So this was a nice universal solution for that. If we take a look at this up closely, you can kind of see how it parallels a teletype. In a teletype, you've got a punch and you've got a reader. You see controls across the top here are related to recording, that would be equivalent to punching. Controls across the bottom are related to reading, which would be equivalent to the paper tape reader. You can select between two different cassettes if you wanted. So you could actually have cassette B be a punch and cassette A be a reader and alternate between them on the fly if you uh, had this configured to use automatic operation. In our case, we're gonna use all manual operations, so we're gonna record and play back from a single cassette. You see over here at the left is a manual and an auto mode. In the automatic mode, you can automatically turn on the device, enable read, enable, enable write, enable read, sort of like you could on a teletype that had the automatic features. Um, that required some additional hardware from Southwest, uh, most specifically their, their CT, 1024 terminal that would decode control characters and send back signal lines to this to turn things on and off But we're just going to run this manually just like you would if you had a teletype that only had a manual reader and punch You can always enable and turn those on yourself. All right, we're gonna do a short video cut and we're going to come back and uh, Get onto the computer and the mic bug and go ahead and see how we would save and load programs using this cassette interface. All right, what you see up there is the prompt from our monitor ROM. I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate a couple things again, like in the last video. The M command is used to change and examine memory locations. Here we're looking at the content of address 100 hex, and we can simply hit the dot to go examine next through locations. You can go backwards one by hitting the up arrow, or in this case, it's actually a caret. Um, to change the location, you just type in a new value. So 01, 02, 03, 0, and those are all getting your memory and going into the next location. So it's very easy to enter data. Now you can see that this is quicker than it was in our previous video on the teletype. However, it's still not instantaneous. And that's because we are running this console at 300 baud to match the cassette. That's one of the downsides of having this look exactly like a teletype is our console speed is limited by the cassette. Since in a teletype, it was all the same speed coming through the same serial port. All right, so now I could type in a program here, but rather than make you watch that like in the last video, I've already put the program in. It's down at zero, just like before. It's a similar program, just does a little bit more. So we'll jump to address zero and it'll run the program. It's asking me to type a message. All right, now it's asking me how many times to repeat it. I'll say three. And as you can see here, we're running at 300 baud. You see all my backspaces and everything in real time. Um, and we're going to demonstrate in a little bit a way to get around this so you have a 9600 baud console, even though you have a 300 baud modem. All right, so let's say we want to save this out to cassette. Just like before, we have to tell swap bug or the monitor ROM what range of memory to save. And you specify that up at address A002. 
Here we specify the start address. We'll do 0000. zero, zero, zero. And at A004 is the end address, which is 0049. All right, I'm also going to do something new here. I'm going to set an address at A048. This is where you can specify the start address of the program um, once it's loaded to make it easier to just run it. I'll show you that in a minute. Our program loads at 0000. zero, zero, zero. And with a command called E, um, it will write this value out so that when it loads the program, it knows where to start. And that E command also writes the S9 record that completes the punch operation. In the last video, we went to local mode to punch the S9 record. Here we're going to use this E command, which is part of the SWAT bug update as opposed to the original MIC bug. All right, so let's go ahead and get this ready to go. I'm going to zoom back a bit here so we can see the cassette interface and the console at the same time. All right, before we punch it, I'm going to put this into record mode. So right now the cassette's recording some leader. I will enable data to go to the cassette. Prior to doing that, it would have ignored anything I sent it. And I'm going to hit the punch command. So now we can see the S records are coming out. You can also see here this activity light tells us that, yes, the cassette is getting data. All right, so all the data has been punched, but not the S9 record. I'm going to hit E. And you can see it wrote out something from A048, that's our start address, and it did the S9 record for us. So now that's complete. And I can turn that off now. All right, let's go ahead and turn off power of the computer. We're gonna let it clear memory, turn it back on. All right, I'm gonna rewind this to where we started recording. All right, again, like I enabled output data, I need to now enable read data. Otherwise, it will allow you to ignore garbage coming from this if you wanted. I'll hit play up on the cassette and hit load here. Pretty soon after it gets past the leader, you'll see the data. Okay, now we're into the data. And again, just like on the teletype, it doesn't echo this on the screen. You'll see this turn off for a bit. This is the period in between it ending and us doing the E command. And there's the E command, and you can see we've now got our console back. Let's stop the tape. Let's come back in here to the console. All right, so with that E command, it allows me to now simply type G to go to whatever address was specified when the program was saved. So that way you don't have to know the load, ad excuse me, the run address of a program. So now I can type this in again. And there you go. Um, now again, let's go ahead and demonstrate the 300 baud. Um, I wonder if Go works again. Not quite. But here you can see the 300 baud is, is a very slow process. On a terminal, it could easily be doing 9600 baud. So that is a bit frustrating when you're trying to use this um, cassette interface. So like other manufacturers that eventually supported the cassette on its own with its own commands, um, Southwest did the same thing, and in SWATBUG, which is the newer version of MICBUG, I can tell by this dollar sign, I have SWATBUG, they did allow you to specify an optional port for the punch, load, and end commands so that you could use the cassette in one port and have your console on a second port. That way the cassette is at 300 and your console is at 96. I'm going to go ahead and do a video cut and reconfigure my machine so it has those as two separate ports and demonstrate that. All right, the system is now configured with the terminal and the cassette interface on two separate ports. The cassette is on the optional port. It's called by the SWAT bug down at port zero. And the console is on the default port one, but it's at 9600 baud now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and load that program. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and um, hit play on the cassette, turn it on, and we'll do the optional load command instead of the normal load command. Optional, that leading with the O means use the optional port. And here we can see the cassette data coming in. And this pause is between us finishing it and typing the E command. There's the E command. And now you can see that this finished over here. Go ahead and zoom into the main terminal now. All right, now I can just hit go.
All right, now let's do it nine times, and you can see how nice that is to be at 9600 versus uh, the 300 baud. So yes, uh, the AC30 was originally designed to look just like a teletype, so everything worked without modification. Um, but like other manufacturers, they eventually added commands specifically to support the cassette on a separate port. And here, this optional command, you could also do optional punch and optional E uh, to exit would go to that separate port. And likewise, starting with later versions of BASIC, just like Altair did with theirs, they supported cassettes on different ports as well. All right, that does it for this demo looking at the cassette interface. Uh, going into the next demo, uh, we'll probably start looking at some of the first floppy disk options that came out for this computer.